So the blog sales funnel, as a reminder, you have three elements. If you're going to copy myself and what those people have done and a whole, like thousands of other people that I've been teaching and obviously a lot of other bloggers online, you need a focused niche blog, you need a problem solving email list and digital products or services. You could sell physical products as well. You can apply this model to selling basically anything. You might need to adjust the funnel, but you need to have access to an audience and you need to have a way to build trust. And that's usually what you do with your content. I'm going to put the slides out to the group as well, guys, if you, if you do miss this. So now it's really important with this that you have obviously the right topic. Now, some of you here will already have a topic because you have a business. So chances are you will use a model potentially like this. I, like I said before, I recommend a blog and an email list. Everyone here should have those tools in their online business. If you're not familiar with a subject already, then the first thing to figure out is what subject do people currently spend money on? Most of my students will struggle with what I'm going to show you on this slide. And if you don't get these things right, everything else you do perfectly, you still don't make money. So you have to get this slide right before you can progress. So first of all, make sure you pick a subject where people actively spend money. Thankfully, the internet today is showing you what people buy. You can go to Amazon.com and find bestseller lists of what currently sells. And that's just one example. There's plenty of other places you can do that. You need to have true empathy with your customer. So this is where I find everyone I coach, even myself on some level, fails because we feel we know a problem people have, but we don't really have the deep level of empathy necessary to know what's the emotional reason why a person wants to solve this problem, what's the language they use to describe the problem, how do they go about looking for answers to the problem already that's not working, you need to be able to step into the shoes of the person who has the problem because your job as an online marketer is to use words to communicate to them. And you need to know the words as good or ideally better than they do. If you know their problem better than they do and you know the language they use to describe it better than they do, they're going to see you as the best solution to, the pro to that problem. And this is what blogging in particular you can do really well with because you're using so much content to communicate with. So you have to pick the right language. And it only comes when you really have the empathy with your marketplace. And that can take time. That's not something you instantly know. You need to really spend some time with your customers. And lastly, this is something I think that's become even more important today because it's so much more crowded on the internet. You need to find what's unique about you that can turn into a strength that you apply to the business model we're following here. So strengths can be a skill set you've developed over time, experiences you've had. It can be uh, some sort of uh, life experience you've had as well. It's not just like experiences with work, but maybe you've gone through some tragedy and that's given you true empathy and understanding about people. It can be a technical skill. It can be a, a, something you've achieved. Maybe you've won some kind of award. Maybe you've just spent a lifetime doing something. It has to be something that gives you an edge because that's what helps you find a place in the market where you stand out. Because I guarantee you right now, you're all going to go into markets that already have competition, probably competition more sophisticated than you. So if you can't go there with the message that says, I have a unique way of solving this problem, that leverages something I'm particularly good at, you're not going to stand out. So you need to really massage these three areas in particular to really get this right. All right. Going forward, once you have your topic, once you're familiar with your market, then you're going to actually set up the system. The system is actually conceptually quite straightforward. You're establishing a blog. You're driving traffic from the blog onto an email list. And then through the email list and the blog, you're presenting offers for your products and services using that funnel model. So you offer lower price products first. Now, it's important with this that you don't do things haphazardly. So back in the day, when I started blogging, what we did as bloggers was throw content out there. We just threw things we were interested in. To a degree, I still do that, to be absolutely honest, but I would recommend for everyone, certainly just getting started, you have to make sure 
everything you do has a purpose. You have to understand the strategy you're trying to implement with the content you produce on the blog, on the email list, because you're trying to guide people through a process. So each piece of content is about getting them ready for the next piece of content. That's basically what's called pre-selling. So if you're familiar with any of Jay Abraham's work, he came up with this concept known as pre-selling, which basically means you're offering something in advance of trying to make them buy from you. You're giving them what he called a result in advance. To do that with blogging and in email marketing is through education. So you're providing content, maybe you're also providing software or services, but you're giving people something so that they go, wow, this person's already helped me and I haven't had to spend any money with them yet. Look how great the value is. They're more likely to then choose to buy from you when it comes to the point of them needing to buy something. The email sequence needs to be very structured, very specific. I haven't got time to really go into it, but you're, you're, the idea here is you're guiding people towards a product offer. So your blog is trying to get attention and then convince them to join an email list. The email list is educating the people, getting them ready to buy a product. And the last step in the process I recommend is some kind of rapid product creation method. So most of my my students and my members, they don't have any products yet, and obviously we don't want to have them spending six months creating a whole information product and then selling it and no one buying it. So most people start with some kind of rapid product, and a basic example of that is delivering webinars. So instead of going and creating a six-month course full of videos and then selling it, you say, I'm going to sell you a webinar, sell it first, see if you have buyers, then deliver the webinar once you have buyers, record the webinar, and then you can keep selling that as an ongoing product. There's other formats you can use, but the webinar today is pretty much the most popular instant delivery format available. All right, step three is traffic. So I have a technique called get published. It's really basic, and it's as basic as it sounds. Uh, people can overcomplicate traffic building. You know, SEO, buying traffic, all these different methods, social media. I believe if you take traffic building to the basic principle of marketing, which simply means taking your content and getting exposure to other people, getting published, then that's how you can build an audience. Now, this in reality is what you'll see most bloggers are doing. This is the very top of the funnel. They have social media channels, they have pay-per-click, they have search engine optimization, they're doing podcasts, they're doing YouTube. What I find is if you go speak to most successful bloggers and say, how do you get your traffic originally? They'll all say to you, I had one breakthrough channel. They'll say, I started a podcast and, and that just skyrocketed. Or I started doing videos on YouTube and it just, that's what took, took off for me. Or I just spent a lot of time on Pinterest putting up pictures and that's what drew most of the traffic to my blog. So what I tell my students again, don't get overwhelmed by all this. This can be in your future when you're big enough to support all these different traffic building methods. But to begin with, at the start, pick one channel and go deep with it. Just really focus on it, become an expert at it, do a great job at it, and that is more likely to get you a breakthrough outcome with your traffic building. Then you can expand to those other things when you've got the capabilities and the resources to do so. Okay, now if you can reach this step, you're doing really well because you've actually built the machine already. So you've built the blog, you've built the email list, you've gone out there and created a product, and you've got traffic. So the, the machine is actually functioning. That machine can be completely automated. I built that machine now. It's running on the internet. People find my blog every day. They go join my email list. They, they buy my products. I have a business. So that's a great place to get to. Unfortunately, when you build the machine, often it doesn't work first off. So you have to start doing some incremental improvements of the process. I'm just going to quickly run through the areas where most people spend their time testing and improving. This is where the failure points are. If you're not making money, at the end of the day, it's probably because of one of these things or several of them breaking down. So if your traffic source is not delivering traffic, you're obviously not going to make any money. So step one, you have to make sure you're getting some traffic. 